my name is H.A. Pruitt and I am the author of Anathalian and the second book in the Anathalian series, Earthquaking. And in this video, I'm going to tell you my editing process for the second book in the Anathalian series, Earthquaking. So here it is. So for my editing process for Earthquaking, I um, write in the note, I write handwrite all of the story of Anathalian in notebooks. This is notebook three and four. This has the majority of earthquaking in it. And as I write, every time I pick back up writing, I go back and read most of what I wrote the time before, or maybe some more. And I put any words that I had omitted. Um, it's mostly, I mark any mistakes like misspelled words, omitted words, or omitted punctuation, I notice. And I just put it in there. There's sometimes, well, I usually do this, like, I'll, I'll be writing along and then I'll start to write the next sentence and then I will put in this sentence and then keep writing. If there's a bunch like this, it's usually while I'm writing that I put it in there. Sometimes I even will write a sentence and then um, decide I want to put a sentence before that and then write it up here in the margin and put a little star by it. So this is the first draft and the first draft how it is in the notebook, 98% of that is what is in the final copy of the book. It's mostly when I read through it like this. It is misspelled words, omitted words, and omitted punctuation that I edit and correct. So the notebooks, I read them to my husband. I read Earthquaking to my husband from the notebooks. And so as I read through them, I noticed if I omitted words, if I misspelled words, if I missed punctuation, and I put that in there as I read through if I had a pencil. Sometimes when I'm writing I can't quite grasp the word that I want and so I will write a couple words in the same space. Um, I will try and find what I mean. I'll write a couple words in the same space and then I'll ask him like which word do you think is better? I'll just write them on top of each other on the same line. Um, I can't find one at this very second. Oh, like, rocked and scoured her mind. See, I just, um, that sounds really weird to interchange those, but it's like that. I'll be like, which one should I put? And then I'll decide which one. Or he'll help me decide which one. Sometimes I just decide what I want, whatever, regardless of what he says. So, um, that is the way he kind of helped me edit it to decide which word was better. Then I get antsy um, after I read it to him. Like, I started writing Anathalian, I think, in 2013. And I didn't publish the first book until 2020. And so, in that time, when I was publishing the first book and thinking about it, I just I just wanted to read it again to myself. And so I just reread through the whole series I had written so far. And so I just, again, marked any misspelled words, any... Um, punctuation that needed to be fixed and I had learned about copy editing and um, grammar in general since that point and so I fixed anything like that in my notebooks. Um, so in the notebooks it's pretty good and exactly like it should be but I am a bad typer. I'm a really bad typer um, and so when it came from the notebooks and I typed it into the manuscript on the computer I made a lot of mistakes just because I'm, I'm just not a good typer. I, that's why I handwrite it first. And so there were a, probably a lot more mistakes in this first type draft than there were in the notebooks. And that's why it looks just all over the place. So when I typed it, I tried to include everything necessary. Um, but I, as you can see, I made quite a few mistakes. I printed off this finished copy whenever I finished typing it. It didn't have the chapter headers or anything, but all the words were there. Um, so I printed it off and I read through it three times. Purple, green, and orange. I read through this copy of the manuscript three times. And I printed it front and back. And it's upside down for no apparent reason. So I look, when I read through it this time, I look for words I usually mistype, like form and from. I will always, always mistype form and from and get them mixed up because my fingers on the keys just do that. And that's just how it is. Um, hear, heard, and heart. I will switch those words and mistype them. Also, I checked for fantasy words. Like, check the spelling of Binnacle's home. I needed to check the spelling of Binnacle and Binnacle's home. Any fantasy words, any words that your Word document says are not real words, it's going to mark all of those as misspelled. 
And so you're gonna have to go back and make sure they are spelled correctly and consistently. Um, Tortuosus Labyrinthos is the name of Binnacle's home. And so I had to make sure that it had all the O's and U's where they should be. And it, word, the word document will tell you it's wrong whether it's wrong or right in your fantasy spelling. And so that's why you have to pay really close attention. So I marked it every time in this copy of the manuscript. I marked his home name every single time I ran across it. Also in this particular draft, I guess you could call it, I used my copy editing handbook to make sure I properly, bleh, properly punctuated adverbial phrases, sentence adverbs, compound sentences, restrictive and non-restrictive restrictive clauses, and everything like that. Um, this taught me a lot, it helped me a lot, helped me remember a lot, and just made it to where I could edit my own book. I do not advise editing your own book. I just, honestly, in high school, I wanted to be an editor, and I was working hard on my editing skills. I didn't, I never wanted to be an author, I wanted to be an editor, and so, um, I wouldn't advise doing it yourself, but I'll talk about that later in the video. But this thing helped me edit it so much and so well. <laughs> Very much helpful. And so, and then I did again read it out loud. I read it out loud from this to my husband and he helped me catch anything that shouldn't be there. There wasn't anything in this book, I don't think, but in book three, there's a line that Ella says, and he's like, that's an expression in our world that she wouldn't know. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. So there's one word I had to change in that expression she used. Um, but he, he points out anything that he notices, and there's not usually very much. Because, I mean, I read it to him from here, and that example just popped in my mind whenever I was talking about this. So he helps me with that and catch any typing inconsistencies so um and then there's these two sentences that just made gave me fits and i have no idea what page they're on in this okay i'm turning this right side up and in this draft i also added the chapter titles this is the part where i named my chapter titles and figured out what where the breaks should be for chapters um okay Hey, look, there's one of those fantasy words. Nasa is the horse's name, and I... Nasa ha ha is not the horse's name. Um, yeah, so it's stuff like that. I just don't type very well. Okay, I was saying something. Let's see. Oh, there's these two sentences in my book, and it's where they first meet the um, rock monster, and I'm describing him. And there's one sentence, and it just gave me fits, and I had to rearrange it. And then there's another. There it is, right here. You can tell. Um, I had to break it up into different parts and rearrange it and <laughs> check it and check it again and check it every time. Um, yeah, so that, that sentence I actually had to edit, like legitimately editing went on right here. I spent a lot of time on that sentence. And then there's another sentence that Ella says in the middle of her very wise discourse. And she, I can't find it. It's just one little tiny sentence, but um, it gave me a lot of fits, and it gave me a lot of fits all the way into the final version of the book. And I still don't know if it's right, but it's when she says, um, she's talking to Kindle. I can't remember exactly what it is, and I don't want to say it. Something about, you've, you'll never miss anything that you were never intended to, or something like that. And the all the negatives that she says opposed to the positive form and yeah okay I'm gonna stop talking about that because it gives me fits but look for anything yeah that you know that needs fixing and fix that so after this draft I fixed all of my errors on the computer and then I printed out my second typed draft and I've got it in my notebook here and I gave this first to Brenda. She helped me edit it. And she just found like eight things, I think, to fix. She just found like eight corrections. And then I fixed those on the computer. And then I went through and I read this copy of the draft three or four times. And again, I just looked for where to 
I just kind of looked for the same things. Anything I usually mistype, any fantasy words, um, any punctuation. I noticed that I put I type of too much, and so I needed to take of out. Um, I looked at the formatting because in this draft was when I also, as I was working on fixing all the line editing stuff, I went through and I did the editing on it because the next step would be to do my author copy and just little things like that, like fixing the lay and the lie and the tense like that. Um, Tad has his evil half grin, half giddy, half evil grin, and I decided to hyphenate that because it made more sense because it's kind of like one word. And just fixing a bunch of, and suddenly, I, I also recognize I typed suddenly too much, and so I would take it out or put it in a synonym, think about is it really necessary. Um, and so you see it's not a whole lot of editing, like some pages it was just um, a matter of taking out an of and a suddenly, that's on this page, suddenly and of, putting in a comma here and there whenever I had a compound sentence and I just hadn't gotten that comma in when I type. Um, yeah, so that's about it. See, this copy, I read through it three times, orange, purple, and green, and there wasn't really very much to fix in this one, and so that made me happy respectively. Like, it's a 300-page book, guys. I know it looks like a lot, but it's 300 pages, and so having a few things on each page isn't very much. So, after that, that, that is the last page of this one, and I knew, I, I found out some things that I didn't know when I first typed this back in, like, 2014 or whatever, and yeah, so... We're just not going to talk about that that I fixed because I know more now than I knew then about the backstory. Then um, I have my author copy. And in my author copy, again, I did the same process. Read through, look for the things. I read through it three times with orange, green, and purple. And you can see there's many less. And the majority of what I did here <laughs> was draw pictures and be happy. No, that's lies. Um, the majority of what I did in my author copy was I looked for where to break up paragraphs because in these big sheets your paragraphs don't look so chunky but when you get it in a book it looks really chunky and so you break them up more to give the eye more rest. Um, I italicized onomatopoeias and memories right on this page. I italicized one of her memories. Um, also M and cuz, what I'm saying is I fix the M's and the cuz, the commas have to go like that instead of the other way which the computer will put them the other way if you don't make it put them that way. Always, always, I looked for commas because you are always going to miss commas and always going to need to fix your commas. <sighs> commas. We're friends and we hate each other at the same time. And then formatting errors and fixes are what I looked for in my book. Kind of this, there go all my cards for my friends. Thanks guys. Um, yeah. So it wasn't a whole lot once I got to my author copy because I did it, it pretty well throughout the manuscript drafts uh, typed up. Mostly paragraphs needing to be broken up and me writing notes to myself. So I think I did about 10 rounds of editing um, and I'm going to talk a little bit more in the next section about this is my way of editing but I don't recommend it to anyone else and why. So, um, as I said, this is my way of editing and I would not suggest that other people do this. I would suggest other people get an editor and have someone else look at their writing. Basically, my process boils down to I read through my manuscript a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of times. But also, like I said, I never, my intention was to never become an author. I really wanted to become an editor and so that, that's something I just really love and really like to do. It's kind of like kind of like a puzzle for me to find all the places that you're supposed to insert the commas and to find all the correct tense and I don't know but um I would I would advise most people to and just the general nature of how I write the Anathalian series I just write it out in chrono chronological order and it's just it's just the first draft is what's in this book and so um yeah I don't change it but anyone else I would because any other thing I write I do go back and I do change and I do look at it and I do reorder. This is something different. This is something different. And so that's why I don't recommend this type of editing, just reading through it over and over and over to anyone else. Do that, but then send it to an editor after that. 
So that is all I wanted to say about my editing process. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was fun to watch. And I hope you did get a couple tips from it. If you have any questions about how I edit my books or how I write my books, please do ask me below in the comments if you want to talk about how you edit your book and any tips you have for editing a more normal book than this Anna Thalian series, please do. And also, um, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please like this video. Please leave a comment and um, please consider buying Anna Thalian and reading it just to see what it's like. I gotta tell you though, in the first book, I entrusted my editing to someone else. And so the editing is not what it needs to be. There are commas missing. There's stuff that there's commas missing and it bothers me deeply, but um, it's going to be okay. If you read the second book, that is my level of attention to detail. So hopefully you will enjoy the story of Anna Thalian and enjoy the grammatically correct sentences and wonderful story in Earthquaking. So that is all for now. Bye! If you want to know more about Anna Thalian or H.A. Pruitt, please follow me on Instagram at H.A. Pruitt. You can find me on Amazon as an Amazon author, H.A. Pruitt. Please watch my YouTube channel and all my cool videos on my channel, H.A. Pruitt Anna Thalian. You can find me on the Facebook page, H.A. Pruitt Anna Thalian. You can follow me on Goodreads by the name H.A. Pruitt and the book Anna Thalian. Or you can go to my website where so much cool stuff about Anna Thalian is. The website is hapruitt.com. The hills are alive with Ewoks. Okay, so we're just going to edit that part out. Edit.